I have a movie idea. Even I'm mad that I can't see this yet. So just hear me out. So there's these two friends and they're visiting a new city. They're on a vacation and they're like, we need to find something to do. So they Google fun things to do in that city. And then they find a VR escape room. If you don't know what that is, it's a virtual reality like helmet. So it looks like you're in somewhere that you're not, but it's also an escape room. Immediately, they're like, we have to do this. So they book a room and they go. When they show up, the whole place is empty. They're the only two there. Now they're really excited. Then the person who runs the place greets them and sets them up. They put the helmet on them and they press start. The two friends booked the scariest escape room. Immediately, they're sucked into this game that's absolutely terrifying. But it's no big deal, right? Because it's just a game. But about 10 minutes into it, the game starts getting a little too terrifying. And through their headset, they're like, hey, do you want to get off? I'm kind of freaked out. And they both agree. They're like, okay, we're done. Except their helmets won't come off. They're yelling for the person to come and help them. They can't figure out why the helmets won't come off. But nobody answers them. And now they're panicking because they're stuck in this game, stuck in a virtual reality. How does this even happen? Did the owner know this would happen? How are they going to get out of this? Is anyone going to come help them? Or is their only way out to finish the game? I have a movie idea. Also, this is a new bathroom, so do you know what that means? New movie ideas. But I'm really excited about this one, so just hear me out. So this story takes place in the future. And as you would guess, technology in this future is a lot more advanced. For example, now, the second you're born, they put this little device at the back of your head. And this device is like no big deal or anything. It just, um, it records all of your memories. Yeah, yeah. Now they created this device to help with a lot of different things. You know, to help like reduce crime. You know, when, when somebody says that, oh, I didn't do it, you can check and you can see that they did do it. Or that they didn't, you know, innocent until proven guilty. I Obviously, there's a lot of people out there. So how are they going to keep track of everyone's memories? Well, there's a job for that. There are certain people that watch over just a randomly selected group of people for their entire lives. That way, not only a few people have to try to keep track of everyone at once. Well, one day, this one guy shows up for his morning shift. He only keeps track of a few thousand people's memories. And as he's sitting there, staring at the screens, watching people's lives, he's drinking coffee. Um, but then all of the computer screens go black. For a second, he panics. But then the screens come back up. Except something is a little different. The memories are um, out of order and they're now programmed into the wrong people. Now there are thousands of people out there with the wrong memories. But there's only one explanation as to how this could happen. His system was hacked. This has never happened before. Why would someone do this? Did someone do something bad and now they're trying to get away with it? Is someone trying to hide something? And can he fix it before all hell breaks loose? I have a movie idea. <laughs> I'm in a hotel right now because I'm moving across the country, but I just had to share this one with you guys. So just hear me out. So there's this young woman and she's smart, kind, funny, beautiful, and famous. And I mean like really famous. So her whole life she's been an actress. She played some really big roles when she was super little. So her whole life she's also had bodyguards. I mean, she's just the it girl of the industry. Well, one night she's got her hair done, her makeup done, and this beautiful gown on because it's movie premiere night. She has this new movie coming out that everyone wants to see because she's in it. So of course the premiere is like this big deal. And I mean anyone and everyone is invited. There are famous people everywhere. Now the movie is about to play for everyone. She's sitting front and center. The beginning of the movie plays and everyone's clapping once they see her on screen. But about 10 minutes into the movie, the screen goes black. And everyone is looking around like, is this supposed to happen? Even her. Until something new pops up on the screen. And it looks like a homemade video. Except the video is of someone walking through her house while she's sleeping. She's had stalkers before, but they've never gotten this close. At the end of the recording, words pop up on the screen. You can run, but you can't hide. And then the power goes out. What is happening? Is her stalker there right now? How did they even make it this far? And who can she really trust? I 
have a movie idea. This one, this one. There's so many different directions this one could go in, so just hear me out. So there's this person. And like usual, after school, they go to their friend's house to hang out with their group. And this isn't just any group of friends. No, this group has been inseparable since kindergarten. Anyway, so this person goes to their friend's house. And as usual, the parents are working late. They order pizza. They're doing things they probably shouldn't be doing. And while they're in the basement, one of the friends comes from downstairs and they're like, Hey, we're out of drinks. Anybody want to go pick some up with me? And while everyone is joining in to go pick up drinks, the one friend stays behind because they have to submit a homework assignment. So they leave and the person is left in the basement alone. After 30 minutes, the one friend finally finishes their assignment just as they hear their friends pulling in the driveway. And then this person decides they want to pull a little prank on their friends. They like to do this thing that when someone's coming in the room to pretend like you're sleeping, it's a joke they've pulled on each other for years. So as the friends are coming back down the stairs, this person pretends like they're sleeping. But something in the air changes when they're coming down the stairs. They're not laughing anymore. And then the person sleeping hears this. Guys, look, it worked. Come on, we've got to get rid of them. At first, the person sleeping thought it was a joke, but something in their gut told them not to wake up. And next thing they know, they're in a trunk. What is happening? Is this some elaborate prank? Where are they going? And is that really their friends? I have a movie idea. This one actually came from a dream I had, so just hear me out. Imagine a world where you know what happens after you die. In fact, you kind of get to choose where you go. Basically, this is how it works. After you've taken your final breath, you get to look over all of the memories you've had in your lifetime, and you only get to pick one memory to relive over and over again. Once you pick that memory and that day, you will basically start living that day on a loop. Kind of like a recording. So there's this person, and they're pretty young, you know, late teens, early 20s. But something tragic happened to them. Something they never saw coming. A car crash. Now this person finds themselves standing in front of all of their memories. And out of everything they could have chosen from, they picked a normal day. This memory just included waking up in their parents' house, having breakfast with them, going to work, coming home, eating dinner. But they just wanted to remember something simple. So now every day, the person wakes up and relives that same day. And this happens for a long time until one day something changed. When they woke up that day and went downstairs for breakfast, the breakfast was different. It was pancakes instead of eggs. And I know that sounds like, oh, what a big deal, pancakes instead of eggs. But this is like a recording. No matter how much they try to change it, things don't change, except now they are. And each day something new is different. How is this happening? What does this mean? Is this really their memory? And are they really dead? I have a movie idea. This one, this one, it, <laughs> just hear me out. So there's this internationally known company called Seekers. And what they do is a little, um, different. Basically what they offer is if somebody's up for the challenge, they have 30 days to find the perfect hiding spot in their home. And a seeker will come out and attempt to find them. Well, if they don't get found, they win a million dollars. But if a seeker catches them, um, they sort of disappear. And no one really questions it. Some people even dedicate years of their life training and practicing so that they can hide and take on the challenge. Even though it's unheard of to actually win. Well, one day an anonymous person takes on the challenge. They even request the best seeker out of all of them. 30 days later, the seeker arrives. He now has 24 hours to find this person. But something's different. Why can't he find this person? No one has ever outsmarted him. And what really happens if a seeker loses? I have a movie idea. Just hear me out. So there's this girl, right? And she's really like, she's really into social media. And when I say she's like into social media, I mean like it's her entire life. Well, I think. Because here's the thing, no one actually knows who she is. Hear me out. This girl is famous. I mean like hundreds of millions of followers from all across the world. Everybody talks about her on the news, on TV, online. Her face is everywhere. But no one has actually met her in person. She's never taken a video or a picture with anybody. She's never been spotted in public. Nobody can find connections to whoever her family or friends are. 
But she's not fake because on like live videos, she'll respond to comments, but she never accepts like verbal interviews. Nobody has ever actually spoken to the girl. In fact, she doesn't even go by her real name, whatever it is. How is this even possible? Is there a reason that she's hiding? And just like everyone else is asking, who is she? Hollywood, where you at? I have a movie idea. I'm back. Just hear me out. So there's this person and they live in like kind of a small town. Like a lot of people live there, but not too many people. Well, one day they decide to go for their daily walk around their neighborhood and it's going good. You know, they're walking on the trail by the lake. It's a beautiful day out. The birds are chirping, the fish are swimming, and there's a dead body. Yeah, you heard me right. Not far off the trail is a body laying in the leaves. The person begins to panic. They take out their phone and right before they're about to call 911, they stop and they leave like they never saw anything. Now I bet you're wondering why would they do that? Why not go to the person and see if they're really d Why not call somebody to tell them you found it? This is why. That morning, the local news announced that there's a serial killer in town, but not just any serial killer. No, this one likes to play a little game because when they kill someone, their next victim is whoever found the previous body. <laughs> so this person had two options. Run home and pray that the killer had no idea you were there or call 911 and ensure you're the next target. Who is the killer? Why are they doing this? Will the killer know who found that body? Was the person being watched when they found it? If they tell police, will they be able to protect them? Or is this killer more clever than they thought? I have a movie idea. I'm really excited about this one. So just hear me out. So there's this FBI agent. And one morning when he gets to work, he gets a call. The call is from some police department in North Carolina and they need the FBI's help. They need this agent's help. Now a call like this must mean something is very wrong because people will only ask for this agent if there is a crime or a problem that seems impossible to solve. And if anyone can figure it out, it's him. Within a few hours, he arrives at the police station in North Carolina. But at this point, he still has no idea what's going on because apparently the situation is not something that can be explained over the phone. The person in charge takes the agent and heads him towards the back rooms where we see two girls huddled together in an interrogation room with a blanket around them. And they look petrified. The agent turns to the man and says, what happened? And so the story begins. At about 11 p.m. the previous night, four girls were on their way home from a football game, but then they hit some traffic. And because they had to be home by 12, they decided to take a shortcut. And on this new route that they're taking, they have to go through a tunnel. And this is where the security cameras come into play. All four girls in the car enter the tunnel. And about 10 minutes later, two girls are seen walking out the other side. A person sees them and thinks something's wrong, so they pull over to help them. They look scared, injured, starving, and frozen in fear. All they could say is we've been in there for days. That car and those two girls never came out of that tunnel. The car and the two girls are missing. How could the car be seen going in but never coming out? How come the camera shows that they were only in there for 10 minutes, but they claim they were in there for days? Where is the car and the other two girls? Why can't these other girls talk about what happened? Will the agent figure it out before it's too late for the others? And will we ever know what really happened in that tunnel? <laughs> I have a movie idea. What if the movie Legally Blonde was a mystery thriller? Just hear me out. So there's this blonde girl named Elle Woods. She's super bubbly. She's the president of her sorority. And one day her super perfect boyfriend dumps her out of nowhere. Obviously she's devastated and she asks him why. And he makes up some lame excuse that because he's going to Harvard Law School, he can't be with her anymore. So Elle has an idea. If she can't be with him because he's leaving to go to Harvard Law, then she'll just get into Harvard Law School too. I mean, what, like it's hard? So now they're both in law school. And even though everybody is expecting her to fail, she's actually doing really good. <laughs> She even got a spot as one of the student interns on some huge murder case. The client that they're working with is being accused of murdering her husband, and she claims that she is innocent. Well, one day a piece of evidence is sent over to Elle for her to look into, to do some research. 
When she opens up the envelope, she finds a pair of earrings. And these aren't just any earrings. They are one of a kind. Extremely expensive. But they don't belong to the client. Because somebody else bought those earrings about a year ago. And her name is Elle Woods. This has to be a coincidence. This has to be a mistake. But as time moves forward and evidence and research are being brought to the surface, Elle is realizing something. That somehow she is being connected to this murder. But nobody else has figured it out yet. Or so it seems. Why is this happening? Where is this evidence coming from? Is someone trying to frame her for this murder? Will she be able to figure out the truth before somebody else does? Or will she end up behind bars for a murder she did not commit? I have an idea. What if the movie Mean Girls was a thriller? Just hear me out. So there's this new girl named Katie. She just moved from another country. And for the first time ever, she's going to high school. High school. <sighs> Immediately, she becomes friends with two people, Janice and Damien. They tell her everything she needs to know, including who she should hate. Regina George and her two best friends. They tell her that even though she may seem super nice, Regina is vicious. She's done terrible things. So when Regina wants to take Katie under her wing, Janice has an idea, using Katie to get revenge. So Katie starts hanging out with the girls and Janice will send Katie texts about how to prank her. Well, one night Katie's just at home and she gets a text from an unknown number. The text says to go to the high school, the door is unlocked and put a dead fish in Regina's locker. Clearly the text was from Janice. So she gets a fish and she goes to the high school. Just like the text said, the door was unlocked. When she walks in, the school is so quiet. No one is there and the lights are off. So she goes to the locker and she puts the fish inside. And just as she closes the door, she gets another text. That same unknown number says go to the janitor's closet. So she listens. When she gets to the closet and opens the door, she freezes. Regina George is tied up to a chair with duct tape over her mouth. Right before Katie's about to rip the duct tape off of her mouth, a text comes in. That same unknown number says kill Regina now. Immediately, Katie freaks out. This has gone way too far. Janice has gone too far. Katie calls Janice, but there's no answer. Calls again, no answer. So she calls Damien. When Damien picks up, she's like, where is Janice? This has gone too far. Why is she texting me these things? But Damien stops her. He sounds like he's been crying. And then he says, Katie, Janice is dead. Somebody killed her. Suddenly the door slams behind Katie. Somebody locks her in the closet with Regina. And then another text comes through from that unknown number. It says, kill Regina or you're next. And with perfect timing, the service cuts out. Who is doing this? Have they been watching Katie? Was their plan to frame her for Regina's death? Did Regina's friends turn against her? Could Damien be behind all of this? How do we know if Janice is really dead? Or is Regina more twisted than we thought?